This is an introduction to the Azure portal. My name is Chris Peachman, and I'm a Microsoft MVP. You can follow me on my blog at buildazure.com, as well as on Twitter at buildazure. Now we'll go into how to get started with the Azure portal. Now I'm on azure.com, or the azure.microsoft.com website. You can get to it by azure.com. And we can click Start Free to go ahead and start a free trial in Azure and create a subscription and get some free credits to use. Or if we already have an Azure subscription, we can also click Portal to get to the Azure portal. We'll click that and I have to log in to the Azure portal. So I'll log in with my credentials, the Microsoft account. Now that I'm logged in, it's redirected me over to portal.azure.com. You can get this directly by just typing in portal.azure.com in your browser, and then it'll prompt you to log in, and you can go from there. So now we see my dashboard. This is the default view of the dashboard. We have a tile for all resources, showing all resources in my subscription. Right now, this subscription doesn't really have anything. A brand new one that you just created a free trial won't actually have anything listed in the list. And then service health played, or tile rather, shows green check marks showing the health status of all the different Azure regions around the globe. And then there's links to directly access the Azure Marketplace and the help and support. So now getting started in the portal here, on the top right we have the, our name that we're logged in as and the name of the Azure AD tenant that we're authenticated with. If I click this, on the bottom here I have additional Azure AD directories or tenants that I can have access to Azure subscriptions for with this login, so I have them listed here. If you set up a free trial or you just have access to one, you will only see the one that you're logged in with. So then I can sign out, I can change my password, I can submit an idea, if I have an idea for Azure or the portal, I can click this to open up a new tab to view my billing information for my subscription. And if I go through the buttons here in the top header, we have the question mark, it's going to open up help and support. We can also access keyboard shortcuts in here. So you open that up and then we can see the various keyboard shortcuts. N for opening up the new blade to create new resources, B for browse, slash for search, and so on. Then we can click on the gear, and that's going to open up some customizing settings we can use. To customize the portal, we can change the color theme if we want to change the contrast of the colors or different color based on what's here available. We can enable, disable animations, command labels, toast notifications within the portal. And if we scroll down, we can access the languages, we can change the language display of the portal, and the regional format as well or if we need to change that other than English um, where it's defaulted to. I close that. Then also if I double click on this blank space of the dashboard, this will actually change the color theme of the portal for me as well. So you can do that anywhere you can access this background, blank background. I click on the notification bell. It's going to open up the notifications. It's going to tell me any notifications. So it's going to tell me that stuff is provisioning, stuff's completed provisioning, it's going to, to toast notification uh, display for the amount of credits I have remaining on a free trial or an MSDN subscription in that case. Those types of things will show there as well. And then there's a search where we can type in here and search for different resources we have in our subscription. Now next I'll show the navigation pane on the left. First I'll cover new after but first we have the different resource types. So we have resource groups where we can click on this to view all resource groups in the subscription. Right now I don't have any. See how this pane collapsed? I'll click the hamburger menu to expand it and see the labels again. Then we click to see all resources in this subscription, recent, um, specifically app services resources, virtual machines um, classic or virtual machines ARM, databases, cloud services, and so on. If I go down here on the bottom and I click more, re more services, this will open up a pane where we can see a list that we can scroll through of all the different services within Azure. We also have a filter where we can type in to search for specific resource types. And then these stars, if the star is highlighted, it shows it in the li link list on the left. If I uncheck that, it'll remove it from the list. So we can see SQL databases was the top. I unchecked it, it removed it. I checked it again, now it showed up on the bottom. And I can also grab this handle on these and I can drag them around and reposition them in the list here as I want to customize that. And then I can click on this list, or I can even click over here in the More Services pane, and it'll go to the view of 
just those resources for the resource type that I clicked. Right now I don't have any of those resources in here. Now I go back to my dashboard. I can click on Microsoft Azure in the header. This goes back to the dashboard. We can also customize this dashboard. So if I click Edit Dashboard, it goes into customization mode. And I can take these tiles and I can drag them around. I can even go in here and search by type, say App Services. And I don't have any app services, but if I did, I'd be able to grab some tiles to be able to pin there and customize the dashboard to view information about the services I have in my subscription. So let's go provision a service and let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to click Done Customizing. And I'm going to go click on the plus new. Now that opens up, I have a view of the Azure Marketplace. I have different categories like under Compute. I have some common featured suggestions for virtual machines to spin up. So Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center, Server 2016 Data Center, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Ubuntu Server. I can also click See All to view all of the different images in the Marketplace for Compute. Or I have these different categories, more um, networking options, storage options, web plus mobile, and database options. And if I want to view the full marketplace, I can either search for something specifically in the search box, or I can click this see all link to go view the whole marketplace. In this case, I'm going to spin up an Azure web app. So let's go web plus mobile, and I'll click web app. This opens up the blade to create a new web app. So I'm going to name my web app. Let's give it a name that has to be unique because it's used as a subdomain of azurewebsites.net. My subscription is selected. I'm going to copy the app name. I'll paste that in as a resource group name and suffix it with group. And then I can pick the app service plan. I'll say create a new app service plan. I'm going to name this app service plan. Again, this is just an overview of web apps and kind of how to set them up. I just want to show how the portal works. So then the pricing tier, I'll leave it as the standard. Leave it in the South Central US region. I'll click OK and then click Create. And that's going to go and create the web app in my Azure subscription. Now you see the Toast notification. It says deployment is started. If I open up the Notifications tab in the top here, we can see the notifications deployment is started. Right now it's working on deploying that resource for me. In the meantime, while it's deploying it, it has already created the resource group. So let's go click on Resource Groups in the left navigation. And I can see my resource group is there. I'll click on the resource group, and now we can see all the resources that are in the resource group. Currently, it's created the app service plan. This defines the VM underlying that hosts my web app, and it's currently working on deploying out and provisioning that web app. Now that the app service plan, okay, now it says deployment has exceeded. I can open up these toast notifications and see, yes, that notification is there in case the toast disappears and I missed it. I can go double check here. Deployment has succeeded. I'll close that, and I'll just click refresh on the resource group. Now we can see the app service and the web app is there and the app service plan. I'll click on the web app and it'll open up the app service blade for the web app and I can see the information about my web app such as the URL that I get by default to be able to access the web app. If I click on this it'll open up a new browser tab. I can see my FTP endpoint information and then I have a list of links on the left of the blade here. All the different settings and configurations that I can access. In addition to a row of commands at the top that are commonly used commands for the resource you're looking at. On the left here if I scroll down and I go to deployment options. Uh, I can go in here and choose a source and I could set up continuous integration or automated deployments from source control directly out into my Azure web app. And if I scroll down under application settings here and click on this, I can specify the version of .NET Framework, PHP, Java, Python, other settings including application settings, connection strings, things like that for my application as well. And then I can scroll down I have a host of other features, um, links for each different pane of features that I can configure or things I can access and scrolling all the way down to the bottom we have more monitoring and metrics types things. We can enable diagnostic logs and view a log stream and other features. Um, each, uh, each service in Azure has various different feature sets that it supports. Uh, these top ones they pretty much all support so tags, access control, activity log, and then an overview pane of some kind for all resources with a row of buttons at the top for actions that are commonly used on those items. And that's kind of how the, the portal is laid out. And if we notice, there's breadcrumbs at the top that shows me kind of where I've been and where I'm at. So I can click on the group here to go back to the resource group or resource groups to go back to the list of resource groups and kind of navigate back to where I was. And then if I scroll 
the browser to the right. There's nothing to the right, and when it adds new blades, it puts them to the right of the old blade. So if I scroll to the left, I can go and see here's my resource group blade, and here's my list of resources, or resource groups rather. So it kind of lays things out horizontally, but as you can see, it really does try to stretch out the blades for the different services to be full screen, so it utilizes the full screen of, for what you're looking at, but you can still scroll over or use the breadcrumbs to navigate back and access things. Now also, if I go and click the X on this blade for the app service web app, it'll close that and then it'll reposition and show me the next blade over to the left, which in this case is the resource groups, and we can see the breadcrumbs at the top have adjusted accordingly. So I'll click on Microsoft Azure, go back to my dashboard. Now I can edit the dashboard and I can customize it a little bit with my web app. So I'll say find tiles by type, app service, and it still doesn't show my resource for some reason. Uh, I may have to refresh the browser in this case. Let's go back to the resource group and we'll go to the web app and I'll show how I can pin something from there. So we have underneath this monitoring section, there's a graph showing requests and errors over our web app. We can edit this to add or remove metrics from the graph, or if we go up here in the header of this tile, click the ellipse button and say pin to dashboard. Now it's gone and pinned this tile to my dashboard. We can see the pin request error for some reason. Um, I'll try refreshing the browser and we'll try that again. So now I refresh the browser, I'm back in here on the overview blade, and I'll click the ellipse and say pin to dashboard. No, it actually did pin it. Okay, so go back to the dashboard now. Actually, I should have two of them. I thought it said errored, but it was requested errors as the name of the the thing that was tie out, the pinned. So here I'll remove the redundant one, um, and it actually accidentally removed. Oh no, it didn't. It moved it. It's over to the right. We have to scroll. So let's get rid of that space so we don't have to scroll to see that. Um, so let's click Edit Dashboard, and we'll scroll over here, and then we'll go in here and grab the header and we'll drag it over and reposition it and we'll scroll over and get rid of this empty space and then we can also change the size of it so we can click on the ellipse here and let's say instead of making it real big let's say two by two make it real small just we want to see a little graph just to give us an idea Click done customizing now we can see the requests and errors for our web app on our main dashboard without uh, going to the web app itself giving us a quick view um, you can also create new dashboards or additional dashboards you click on new dashboard name it and customize it as you would want to. Click Done Customizing, and now we can toggle between our two different dashboards with different summaries. Kind of helps give you the ability to customize and give you some kind of DevOps views into resources you have within your subscription um, without having to go to those resources individually and make it cumbersome. So you can pin tiles from multiple resources on the same dashboard um, and create multiple dashboards for specific purposes and, and really make use of that. Um, if I go back to my main dashboard, the default one, I click full screen, then it'll go make the dashboard full screen, um, and I could leave this just display full screen on a monitor if I wish um, to give me a kind of a real-time uh, view of things as the dashboard displays their full screen. And then to exit full screen, we can click exit full screen or hit the escape key, which I just did on the keyboard, and it goes back to regular view. And we can see we do have a notification here that says a 1. I'll click on that. And it shows, yes, the notification that popped up before that it pinned the request and errors tile to the dashboard for me. I can click the X and clear that one in a notification. Um, or I can click the X just to kind of hide them, but they would still show otherwise. I don't have any other ones to show in there right now. So that's a kind of an overview of the Azure portal and kind of how it works and how to access things. I hope this helps everyone when getting started with Azure. Thanks for watching.